Okay, um, so I just wanted to post a very, very quick update video on uh, Jonathan Pyle's MTCP. So I um, had a video, I think it was about two or three weeks ago now, which reviewed a, an unofficial fork of Michael Brookman's MTCP. And Michael Brookman's MTCP, for those of you who don't know, is a stack of um, TCP IP applications such as Telnet and Ping and an FTP server and an HTTP server and all those sorts of great things for you know your vintage IBM PC type XTs or PCs, um, maybe even a PC Junior. So um, the difference with Jonathan Pyle's unofficial version is that that version allows you to use the mouse to copy and paste. It allows you to use the extended keyboard, such as do things like page up and page down. And it also allows you to uh, use Unicode type characters. So usually you just can't use the sort of extended character set. So it will convert them down into something that it can try and display. Now in my last video, um, whilst I said that was all great, there was a few problems such as the mouse crashing the, um, the uh, system and uh, you know there was a few other bugs like um, it was running really quite slow when it was u doing UTF-8. Um, so uh, let's have a look, I've already installed the, the latest version so basically Michael Brutman made an update to his MTCP on I think the 1st of July 2022 and then within a week of that uh, Jonathan Hyde, um, or Pyle sorry, updated his um, version of the fork which incorporated all of these updates and made some optimizations as well so really quick really great to see the developer um, you know working on these updates really quick so really cool to see so I'm just gonna launch straight into Telnet and I'm gonna fire up my BBS and you can see I'm using the July 5th 2022 version of this now, if I go, this is my BBS, the Al's Geek Lab BBS, and the last time, the first problem I had was men I mentioned that using code page 437, which is the native uh, code page of the IBM PC ANSI, um, had a problem. Uh, basically, it was displaying what seemed to be unknown characters. Now, whether that's a uh, problem with the way that my BBS software, which is Mystic, um, sends the characters down and gets interpreted by this terminal client, I'm not sure, but whatever it was, basically uh, code page 437 uh, with the native type wasn't actually displaying properly or at all, it was just munging everything up and so I had to select UTF-8. Well I have noticed that that hasn't been resolved so if I click on uh, code page 437 what I get is, um, well as you can see it's still mumbo jumbo, um, it's pretty much junk. So. Um, if I come out of this, uh, which I'll need to hang up from, and log back in again, I'll now select UTF-8, which is option one. And as you can see, again, UTF-8 works a charm. What you probably couldn't see there is the draw up speed of the ANSI in comparison to what I showed you in my previous video a few weeks ago, and that it is substantially faster. It's still not as fast as the official um, one, and that I think is because what's happening is it's translating um, the codes which it thinks is UTF-8. It's taking the extra bandwidth of the UTF-8 overhead and it's having to compute that and it's having to download some extra bytes as well. So you've got two aspects to deal with there. So it's, it's still slowly drawing down the screen, whereas if you're using the completely native um, TCP or sorry, Telnet client, for example, from Michael Brutman without the UTF-8, you don't have that that sort of slow drawdown. So it is much faster than what it was before, but it still has that issue. Okay, so um, let's log into the BBS. Let's go through a few of these screens here, just quickly. And we'll have a look. Now I've already um, launched my uh, mouse driver and you can see the mouse cursor is moving around there. In my last review I think um, even just moving the mouse cursor around sometimes would make it go um, into a sort of a lockup. So obviously you can see that that's not locking up there. So let's just go into uh, the chat which is somewhere where I'd possibly be wanting to copy and paste. 
Um, so for example, say I wanted to copy the word lobby, I can there drag with my, my left mouse button held down, I've dragged over the word lobby, and I let go of the, uh, the mouse cursor now, and I click with both mouse buttons, you have to be very accurate, which is something I've noticed. So I just, um, what I'll do here is instead of sele selecting the text, which you can do, you can alternatively just double tap with the left mouse button and that selects just that word. Okay, and then I'll try again. And you can see that time I got it right, but it's, it has to be um, very, very precise. Um, you have to make sure that both mouse buttons are clicked at the exact same second, but you can see there that I have copied and then pasted the word lobby. And um, and you can get yeah, somebody saying hi to me there, which is great. But I, I can I can paste, you know, the whole the whole phrase, um, not just one word. So that looks like it's working there. However, what I did um, what I did notice is that it doesn't seem to be working in all manners. So if I go over to um, say make an, a message an email. If I say message myself, which is this option here, I say test. First of all, I can get the test text up here. That's fine. Okay, and now I'm into this text. Te uh, sorry, this text editor. This is a test, and let's just paste that bit of word. Ah, I've lost it. It seems to be working this time, which is uh, bizarre because I tested this out just a moment ago. Let's just try this. There we go. Okay, so that is working, which is really curious because I tested this out um, yesterday and this didn't work in this exact same scenario. So I'm not quite sure why that, why that is the case. But basically what I was finding is that I could use the mouse to copy and paste in some situations and then in, in others not. Um, and it kind of depended on the application that the bulletin board system was running at the time. So, you know, it does, seem, does seem to be working, which is really bizarre. But there you go. The, the main problem with it last time was that it was actually causing quite a lot of uh, lockups. Not every single time, but it was causing lockups. And uh, you can see that this time there are no lockups. That's obviously uh, working faster with um, the delivery of code, uh, sorry, not code page 437, but UTF-8. And um, it's uh, doing all of the sort of things that the new version of MTCP does. So all of the bug fixes that um, Michael Brutman has put in there. So um, definitely if you're running either the older version from 2020 of Michael Brutman's MTCP, or if you're running this, this unofficial fork of um, the MTCP by JH Pyle, then make sure to update to the latest version. It's definitely worthwhile. It has all the enhancements in it. It obviously is more reliable, um, but it still doesn't do code page 437 yet. Perhaps that's um, not intentional. That, that might be a bug that I'm picking up on here. So um, yeah, your mileage may vary, I guess, and it, it might depend on which BBS you go into, or which um, way you telnet into something. Now, I've telneted also from my Raspberry Pi, so going through a Linux box rather than natively, and it doesn't seem to make too much of a way of difference. There are subtle differences, but you know I haven't noticed anything anything major. But certainly, I've, I've noticed um, an improvement overall in the performance, which is absolutely welcome. You can see here I'm pressing page down here. Um, which is something that Michael Brutman's um, MTCP client, even the new updated version one, won't do. And you can see that it's drawing up with relative ease with pretty good speed. There's no real big issue there. So that's a very, very quick update, obviously not in depth of Jonathan Pyle's um, updated version of MTCP. If you've got any questions or comments, please hit me up in the comments below and I'll, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to get back to you on those ones. Um, in the meantime, uh, thanks for watching. Please, if you like this, please press that thumbs up. It really does help. And also, um, if you aren't a subscriber to the channel, there's tons and tons of stuff like this. Uh, there's also lots of reviews of games and um, things about b uh, vintage computing, history, bulletin boards, you name it, it's all on there. So yeah, get on there, get it subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.